To be made right with God, you first need to realize that you're wrong with God. So you first need to be convicted of sin and realize you're not living to the glory of God as you should be. And as God has stated was your purpose for why He put you on earth to begin with in, in the Bible. And so it's very important to understand what we should be, what man was designed to be, in order to be, realize that we're wrong with God so that we have a need created within us to be made right with God. Now, to be made right with God, two things have to happen that you can't do yourself. One thing, you have to have all your sins paid for. And the Bible tells us that we, we can't do that ourselves because sin demands death and hell. And we just can't do that ourselves and pay the full price of sin. So we need a Savior who comes and takes our place to satisfy the justice of God against the sins that we've committed. And that Savior has to not only be in our nature, but also has to be very God, because only an infinite God can satisfy an infinite God in terms of the demands of justice. And so because Jesus is God-man, He can satisfy the justice of God for our sins by dying in our place and bearing the wrath of God against our sin. So that's the first thing. We call that in theology is passive obedience. He passively obeys the Father's will and pays for sin on our behalf. The second thing that needs to be done for us that we cannot do is the law has to be obeyed. In other words, God said to Adam in paradise that the only way he could get to eternal life was by perfect obedience to him and to his law. And so Jesus came for 33 years in this world and he perfectly obeyed all the time. Perfectly loved God above all, perfectly loved his neighbor as himself. That's perfect obedience to the law. And he didn't do that to persuade God that he was righteous, but he did it for our sake as believers. And so we call that his active obedience. He actively loved God above all and his neighbor as himself for 33 years. And so through these two things, his active obedience, his passive obedience, he takes our place when we believe in him alone for salvation and repent of our sins and receive him as the only savior. And in that moment, when you believe in him alone for salvation, he becomes your obedience before God, and He takes over all your sin and your disobedience, and you are made right with God. And from out of that, of course, you have to then live as a Christian, and the fruits of it have to show in your life.